What up, AOK Mafia? It's your boy, Artie Kicks, and just like that, we back with another one. All right, y'all, so, it's late. I usually get my reactions filmed, edited, and uploaded a lot earlier in the day than this. It's already 5.40, and I'm just now sitting here to film a reaction, and I got another one to edit and upload after this, and then, y'all know how I do it. Y'all getting that live video tonight. Y'all is getting that live video. I already got the videos already lined up that I want to react to, but yeah. We about to get into this one, y'all. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than um, the usual life sentence videos that we check out. This one is Top 10 Scary Prisoners Left in Solitary Confinement. This is part one. There's a part two to this as well. So, obviously, we got to check out the part one first. So, y'all boys and girls ready? I'm ready. Let's go. It's estimated that there are anywhere from 80,000 to 100,000 people currently living in solitary confinement in the U.S. alone. Damn. This is where the most dangerous criminals in the country spend their days. They are allowed little to no outside contact and they are under strict supervision. 80 to 100,000 people though? God damn! If I had a dollar for every person that was in solitary confinement, I would be okay. Damn. So let's take a look at some of these terrifying prisoners. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you the top 10 scary prisoners left in solitary confinement. Starting off this countdown, we have the Man in the Iron Mask. What? The Man in the Iron Mask is the name given to an unidentified prisoner arrested in 1669 or 1670. He was imprisoned during the reign of King Louis XIV of France. Now, what's so scary about this prisoner is how his identity was always kept unknown. He was forced to wear a mask that blocked off his face. Some say he wore a black velvet mask, while others reported that it was a full-on iron mask. Apparently, the guards were ordered to shoot this man if he ever removed the mask. Yo, d what? I got so many questions. I got so many questions. Did this, for one, could this man grow a beard? Because if he could grow a beard, then that junk is just going to go crazy. It's gonna grow so crazy underneath this mask. It's gonna be itchy. It's gonna whoop. It's gonna be puffing all out all over the place. It's it's not gonna be fun. It's not gonna be fun. For two, yo, his face had to be so raw underneath that mask, especially if it was a freaking a metal or an iron mask. What? Oh heck no, nah. no. Nah. His ooh is ooh. His face had to stink. He had to have a stinky face underneath that mask. I don't care if he wore a leather mask, whatever he wore, if he couldn't take it off, they were torturing him. Nah, that ain't right. On top of that, he was kept in solitary confinement with double doors. He spent the rest of his life there until he died on November 19th, 1703. Moving on to number nine, we have Jesse Pomeroy. Jesse Pomeroy, otherwise known as the Boston Boy Fiend or the Boy Torturer, was convicted of countless murders at the age of 14 in 1875. Countless murders at the age of 14? What year? Did she say 1875? to 14 in 1875. He would abuse, torture, and then kill his victims. In fact, he was the youngest person in the history of Massachusetts to be convicted of first degree murder. When Jesse was caught, he admitted to the murders and was sentenced to live in the Westboro Boys Reform School until he was 18. However, while at the school, he went on to commit other murders. That's when he was sentenced to prison and was placed in solitary confinement. Nah, nah, sending him to prison ain't enough. Y'all need to put him under the jail. What? Y'all sent this freaking mass murderer, 14-year-old, to a all-boys school. Or freaking, what What, what was what they call it nowadays? Um, um, juvie? Y'all sent him to a, 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 an 1875 juvie? No, y'all needed to put him under the jail in the first place. Like, how you go? He killed folks there. That's crazy. That's messed up on so many levels. Y'all should have put that boy under the jail. His only interactions were with his guard and his mom, who would visit him once a month. In our eighth 
spot we have Ian Manuel. In 1990, when Ian Manuel was only 13 years old, he shot a woman in the face, blowing out part of her jaw during a robbery. Thankfully, she survived, but as a result of his crime, he was tried and convicted as an adult. As a result, he was sentenced to 65 years in prison. He was 13, you say? 13 year old. Shoot a woman point blank in her face. Blew off parts of her face. She survived. But y'all charged him as an adult and gave him 65 years. You give me 65 years, I'd rather you just put me under the jail. Just put me under the jail. Oh, 65 years of no freedom? No women? Oh no, I can't do it. I can't, no, I can't do it. I, I don't even think I could do 20 years with no women. No. 10, no. No women? No. Put me under the jail. Just gonna, just put me under the jail. He was sentenced to 65 years in prison. He was one of the youngest inmates in the Tampa State Penitentiary. Manuel spent 15 plus years in isolation, making him the what? longest serving inmate in solitary confinement in Florida. Eventually, he was released after the woman he shot actually fought for his freedom. Clay really? Look at him. He looks great. She looks great too. I would have never known that she was shot in the face. She didn't want him to be in there no more. Oh man, that is awesome. That is awesome. Because I was going to say, if, if that wasn't the case, y'all should have put him under the jail. But the fact that she fought, the fact that she fought to get him out, that's, I'm, I, I, I F's with that, I F's with that. Everyone does dumb things when they're young, and she didn't want him to waste his life in jail. In our seventh spot, we have Ian Brady. Between 1963 and 1965, Ian Brady and his accomplice tortured, abused, and killed five individuals. They would bury their bodies on the moors outside of Manchester, which gave them the name the Moors Murderers. The crimes they committed were horrific, and Brady expressed no remorse. As a result, he was held in solitary confinement. His only contact with the outside world was through letters. It's said that on his free time, he would memorize whole pages of Shakespeare and Plato and then recite them to himself. He would also often interact with television programs. Brady died in prison on May 15th, 2017 at the age of 79. Wow. Making our way. Yep, he spent the rest of his life in prison. I mean, sh why? Folks is sick. Folks is sick. On list number six, we have Dennis Ratter. Between the oh, look at his face. Oh no, if I saw him at the grocery store, I would call the police just by looking at him. I'd be like, Popo, y'all need to come check this one out, man. Like, something ain't right about him. Y'all look. I'm going with my gut on this one, but y'all might want to check his home out or something. Like, y'all might want to follow him, like discreet, discreetly for like a month. I bet you he up to no good. I bet you he up to no good. Nah, that's you can't do that, y'all. Don't be doing that. That's messed up. Don't do that. Y'all, y'all know I'm just playing. You can't be out there doing that mess. But look at him though. Years of 1974 to 1991, American serial killer Dennis Ratter took the lives of 10 individuals. In 2005, he was convicted for his crimes, and now he's facing 175 years in solitary confinement without the possibility of parole. 175 years put him under the jail what there ain't no possibility I look in my opinion if there's no possibility of somebody getting out of jail then put them under the jail like underneath it all the way like my shirt says Y'all, there's about 15 of these left on the website, artykicks.com. Once they're gone, they're gone for good. I'm just saying. Now, Dennis likes to go by the name BTK, or the BTK Strangler, which stands for Bind Him, Torture Him, and Kill Him. So oh, he's... Yeah, nah. Y'all just need to put him under the jail. 
automatically. He goes by, they ain't gonna bind him, strangle him, kill him. This man is B2K, but turn the two into a T. What? So that says a lot about who this guy is. But thankfully, he is locked away and has no chance of escaping. To this day, Dennis is considered one of the most diabolical serial killers in American history. He looks history. like it. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with John Massey. In 1975, John Massey got into a fight with a pub's bouncer and he shot him in the chest. Ooh. At the age of 26, he was sentenced to life for murder. But while in prison, Massey managed to successfully escape three times. His most notorious escape was when he made a makeshift rope out of sheets and a pair of heavy duty gloves to climb over the prison wall. As a result of his escapes, he was placed in solitary confinement. He was allowed 15 minutes outside of his cell each day and had only eight minutes for a phone call. Other than that, he was kept locked away. He is considered one of Britain's longest serving prisoners. He was eventually released after spending nearly 43 years behind bars. In our fourth spot we have Thomas Silverstein. Thomas Edward Silverstein was an American criminal jailed for armed robbery in 1978. But while in prison, he committed numerous other crimes. In 1983, he killed a prison officer who he stabbed multiple times. Then he murdered two inmates. As a result, he had to be detained in a specially designed cell at the ADX Florence Federal Penitentiary in Colorado. Due to the crimes he committed while in jail, he is considered the most violent prisoner in America. He is wow. also referred to as America's most isolated man. Now, Silverstein was considered so dangerous that he got transferred to a federal prison in Atlanta. There he was confined in a 6 by 7 foot cell. He was constantly under surveillance. In fact, the lights in his cell were never turned off so that they could always keep an eye on him. What? Silverstein eventually died in prison at the age of 67. He is said to have served the longest term in solitary confinement in the federal penitentiary system. Coming in at number 3 we have... Damn! I'm over here trying to think, like, if I was sending this to prison like that, that thing along, with no hopes of getting out, would I go crazy and do some crazy stuff too? Nah, I'd just be in there reading books, getting smarter. Eileen Wernos. Eileen Wernos, often referred to as the damsel of death, was found guilty of killing seven men. She claimed it was self-defense, but then later pleaded guilty to the murders. She would murder them, rob them, and then drive home in their cars. Due to this- I think I heard this woman. This face right here looks familiar. Didn't they make a movie of her? I think they made a movie about her. She crazy. She was named America's first female serial killer. Crazy. Now, Eileen was placed in solitary confinement for quite some time. But then she started to grow paranoid. She thought that the people making her food were spitting in it. And then so? she also claimed that she was being attacked by a sonic weapon. Sonic As a result, weapon. she wanted the court to hurry up with her death sentence. On October 9th, 2002, Eileen died by lethal injection. Moving on to number two, we have Elizabeth Bathory. Elizabeth Bathory, otherwise known as the Countess who bathed in blood, was a serial killer in Hungary back in the 16th century. What? It's believed that she had killed around 650 girls. She's what? also considered the most vicious female serial killer in all recorded history. It's believed. Was she jealous of them because they look better than her? She killed over 600 girls? She had to be jealous. She she killed every pretty girl she came across. That's what she did. She was like, oh no, if I can't be the prettiest, then there can't be no women. That was probably her, her psychology. I'm assuming. Most vicious female serial killer in all recorded history. It's believed that her husband was a big influence in her killings. What? Apparently, he told her to torture her servants. He said what? for her to pour honey all over them and then let the bugs eat them. What? But her killings didn't truly start until she met a witch named Anna Darvula. This witch told Elizabeth that bathing in the blood of the young would help her maintain her youth. And that's exactly what she would do. Eventually, Elizabeth was sentenced to life in solitary confinement. Good. She was locked up in her castle's torture chamber. The windows and doors were boarded up with her inside. There was- That's crazy. They locked this woman up in her own dang on castle. Ah, that's what you get. 
only a small hole in which food was passed in through. On August 21st, 1611, she passed away. And in our number one spot, we have Robert Maudsley. Now, I'm tripping, y'all. I'm trying to put my mind back into to the 1600s. And you got this woman living in this dang on castle, basically underneath it. They put her under the jail, and they done freaking bricked off the whole thing to where she can never ever come out of there. Like she's pissing and duking in that thing like all day every day, and they just feeding her food through a small hole. Like that's crazy. Could you imagine? That's how you die. Oh my god. Don't do horrible stuff, people. Gosh. Oh, it doesn't end well. I talked about Robert in my other video on Dangerous Criminals, and there's no way that I couldn't include him on this list. Robert Maudsley is considered Britain's most dangerous prisoner. Maudsley was originally convicted for one murder, however, killed three more individuals in prison, which got him placed in solitary confinement. In 1977, Maudsley and his fellow inmate held another prisoner hostage. They ended up torturing him for nine hours before cracking his head open and killing him. Now, it's rumored that he may have ate some of that prisoner's brain. As a result, he was deemed the real-life Hannibal Lecter. After that, he murdered two more inmates, which got him placed in solitary confinement. In fact, he is locked up in a glass cell underneath Wakefield Jail. He spent... They put him under the jail. Ha! <laughs> they literally put him under the jail. Y'all, I didn't know they was out here really putting folks under the jail. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that was just something I said one day, but they really do that. Oh, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's 23 hours of his day there. And that's all for today's video. Let's move on to our comment shout-out portion. Oh, hell no. 23 hours he spends every single day under the jail. Oh, yeah. If he ain't already crazy, he crazy crazy. Oh, heck no. Oh, Lord have mercy, man. They out here really putting folks underneath the jail, bro. I was playing when I said that. Oh, man, the shirt's almost sold out, too. And they really doing this mess. It ain't funny. But it's funny. Anyway, y'all know what time it is. If you like this reaction, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more part two coming soon. If you haven't already, make sure you follow your boy right here on the Grandma Twitter and all the kicks. Till the next one.